And um, they've been causing quite a stir on the continent. It's a sort of youth organisation, non-factional nationalist youth organisation. And our next speaker um, is part of this movement. He is Marcus Billinger, and he's written a book called Generation Identity, now in English, for sale at the back of this room. He will even autograph it for you. Yeah? Oh. Um, this is a very good book. He's 21 years old, and this is a very good book. It takes the format of a letter to the 1968 generation, those new left types who have destroyed our culture and civilization. A letter accusing them of what they've done. It's a very good point in this book. Two points I'll mention. He says, I'll quote Adelib, he says, four things matter. How to live life, what to live for, and how to die, and what to die for. Very good. Okay. And I'll, something else he says here. The 68 generation freed us from everything. They freed us from this, from that, from obligations, from responsibilities, from religion, from, from everything, right? But, and now we're free. We're totally free. We're totally free. Splendid. But free to do what? Free for what? Freedom for what? And his answer is freedom to find our way back to ourselves. So without further ado, please, Marcus Villinger, will you please find your way to the podium? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Willinger, Marcus Willinger from Austria. I was invited to speak here and I want to use this opportunity to speak about the new idea and the new movement that is spreading in Europe. Bob died at the So this time I have to use the script. Now the Terrian idea is something totally new, totally new. And we need something new in Europe. Because Europe is dying. Our nations are dying. And with every day, we Europeans become weaker and weaker. With every day, we lose power. Every day brings us closer to our final end. We all know that. We always knew that. But nevertheless, those Europeans who wanted to save Europe spent the last years arguing with each other. They spent their time discussing about minor points, discussing about the attitude according to the Middle East. While the left took control of the media, and while the rulers today did everything to destroy our identity. These argues between the defenders of Europe must end. We must concentrate on the only question that matters in our day. The question, will Europe survive or will it die forever? As long as Europe is dying, are all other questions pointless, meaningless, and ridiculous. The question is, live or die. That's why we need the identitarian idea and the identitarians in Europe, because we focus on this one question. Maybe you have already heard about the identitarians in Europe. Please do now. We are a political organization, but no political party. I will later explain why we, why we are no party, why we only in certain cases take part in the elections. We see ourselves as the defender of our European identity and as the first fighters for the reconquest of Europe. What we try to do is make pressure towards the politicians. We believe that the politics in Europe will only change if we force them to do so. We believe that's not enough just to say we are against something. It's not enough just to vote every four, four years. We have to be on the streets. We have to show our protest. It can't be that Europe is dying and Europeans are against it, and they are against it, but they never showed any sign of protest. Look at the left. When the left wants something, they make pressure, they make pressure, they make pressure, and finally they get it. Yeah. 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 Just because the politicians are afraid, they're afraid about the people, they don't want to do something controversial. And if the people stand up, they will say, okay, okay, let's do that. But we never stood up. We only say it in rooms, we're against it. We, in the, the major, majority of the Europeans was always against mass immigration, but we had never the courage to stand up and say, no, we don't want that. So the left did that, even if they were less than we are, actually. So that's what we try to do. We try to do actions on the streets. We also do other things, writing books and holding speeches and stuff. Um, that stuff, but we believe that the most important thing that Europe has to do today is to do actions. Very fa famous are two actions the French identitarians did last year, uh, this year and last year. First, 
They occupied last year the mosque of Poitiers. They did this with 50 men. They did this to, an, to the anniversary of the famous battle of Tour and Poitiers, where Charles Martel, you speak about that, right? Okay, uh, where Charles Martel defeated the Arabic invasion. So this was a sign of reconquest, a sign of Europe uh, fighting against um, uh, foreign invasions. And they occupied exactly at this weekend the mosque of Poitiers to, to show, actually, again, there's a threat. Again, there's an invasion, and it's time to stand up. And this action made the Alan Terrence famous all over Europe, and they run all medias. So, and it was, to be honest, the best and the best action we had in the last decades. I can't, I can't imagine anything else, which was that brave and really great action. I just congratulate to the French guys. Another action was this year, when the French Ontarians occupied the headquarter of the Socialist Party in Paris. <laughs> that means the uh, president of France is part of the Socialist Party. Uh, party. Mm -hmm. They just occupied it. They, there's a great video on YouTube, and it's really impressive. And they occupied it to show we're against that. And they showed that you can do a lot of things. You just must do it. You just must protest. And even if they're not so half legal, you can do that. You can do something, and you can protest. Another thing was in Vienna in, during this winter. Now, now we also have, um, to make it clear, the motherland of the identitarians is France. France. The, the identitarians were founded in 2002. And during the last years, we in Austria, Germany, Italy, and other countries uh, tried to also develop identitarian movements. But the best organization is definitely in France. So um, you shouldn't write one day a French guy. <laughs> but in Vienna, the Austrian identitarians did also a great action. Uh, this winter, 50, no, I believe more than 100, more than 100 asylums, you know, asylums? Yeah. Asylum, uh, asylum, asylum, asylum seekers. Okay. Yeah. Asylum seekers, okay. Yeah, well. Occupied a great and famous church in Vienna to show that the state <coughs> treats them so terrible and that the government uh, treats them so terrible and as a sign of protest. Actually, the left people came to them and uh, told them, hey, occupy the church, you can so, uh, show your protest. And all the media said, oh, they're so. Uh, so terrible of them, they have to live in a church and, and, and they spend a lot of time, I believe three months in this church. And one day, in February, 20 identitarians also occupied this church. <laughs> and they said, we will not go until they go. We also seek for asylum because uh, we uh, are afraid about the many foreigners in our country. We seek for political protection. Please, we also want uh, to stay in this church. Um, they were forced to leave by a large group of left and police and other people. But one week later, the police removed all asylum seekers of the church because they were afraid about other people doing that. So, about new identitarians uh, occupying that. So, it shows if you just act, you can do something. Even if we, uh, the identitarians are very new in Austria and Germany, we just uh, already started to do some things. So, rely on our actions on, our, on the streets. Now I want to talk a little bit about the situation, about us identitarians in Germany, where I live at the moment. That's a really funny thing, because the German identitarians were founded on Facebook. After the occupation of the mosque of Poitiers, one guy just made a Facebook page, Identitäre Bewegung Deutschland, Identitarian Movement Germany. And finally, from all over the country, people liked it, people made local pages, People started to do actions on the streets, smaller actions of course, but they did something. And in a very, very short time, uh, the identitarians in Germany had 50 local groups, so nearly every bigger city. Um, at the moment, it's now, at the moment, now we are finding out which of the many, many people who wanted to join a movement are really good. Because it's very easy to say, I joined a movement on Facebook, but it's not so easy to join it on the street. So uh, that's what we in Germany are doing at the moment, to transform it. Uh, from Facebook to the reality in some cities, as in Hanover, for example, if you know that, uh, we have managed that. In other cities, we are working on it. But yes, it's a. Uh, also, the French Ontarians were very surprised that in only some weeks, uh, uh, that large Ontarian group appeared in Germany. Because we, no one had expected that. So, one year ago, we had nothing, and now we have a movement. So, that can go very, very fast if you just do something, if there are just some people who act. Against 
Wouldn't do without a Terence fight. We fight, I call them in my book, the 68ers. In general, we fight against the, the ideology of equality. So now I have to read a little bit. Today is Europe ruled by 68ers, the left media, however you call it, by people who want all people to be equal. That's the point. They believe that they could create a better world. That is why they try, try to make our people equal. Actually, they believe that the differences between people, between men and women, between Europeans and Asians, between Germans and Italians, are the reason for war and conflict. Especially in Germany after the Second World War, the new generation asked, how could that happen? What did we wrong? And they said, okay, we have to remove that so-called artificial differences between uh, our groups. So they really believe that actually Europeans and Asians are equal. And if they, if they are not equal, then these differences are social made. If something is social made, you can remove it. That's what they try. And that's also why they say it doesn't matter if millions of non-Europeans come to Europe, because actually they're, we are all human, and there's no difference between us. But there is a difference. There are differences between men and women, between Germans and Italians, between Europeans and Asians. That's a fact. We see these attempts to make all people equal as a declaration of war to all identities. They want us to be lonely individuals, and that's what we call ourselves identitarian. identitarian. Because we the young ones, the identitarian movement is a movement of young people, and we grew up in countries which do not belong to us. We are not allowed to be ourselves. We are not allowed to be who we are, who we are born to be. We are not allowed to be a man, because uh, and we have, yeah, in Austria, some attempts are made that men and women should uh, wear the same clothes and such stuff. <laughs> you know, all the, we are not allowed to speak our language because our language is fascist. We have to gender it. I don't know if you have that, but we have, uh, in German, we have created many words we're not allowed to say. We have to say, um, we don't say man, but we don't say, let's say, teacher, which would be the, English, the German word for teacher would be Lehrer. Uh, we, don't, we are not allowed to say teacher because that's a masculine word. We have to say, Lehrer und Inne, uh, so teachers and, and teachers, yeah, you don't have the problem, I believe, no, no. but in German they, tra they transform our whole language, and I study political science, and I never do that, I never, we call it gender our language, so you make it uh, gender correct, I never do that, but for that I get better marks when I um, present a work I had done, because I didn't gender it, we call it gender, so I know gender in English means something very different, but we call it to, to gender a text, to make it, yes, more politically correct in many, 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 many ways. We see these, all these attempts to make people, people equal as a declaration of war to our identities and we try to defend our identity. That's why we call ourselves identitarian. We are, we refuse, the tr uh, we refuse the idea that it would be better if all people were equal. We believe that our world is so wonderful because we have different groups. Because we have different civilizations, I can go to China and see something totally different. We, I can go to the Arabic world and see a different culture. Uh, I can talk to women, I know they are different, and that makes life interesting, doesn't it? Yes. So, <laughs> what, what would that be a world where we all are equal? It would be a boring world. I wouldn't, live, I wouldn't want to live in such a world. And actually, they try to make all people equal, but they do not succeed. Because um, all they do is killing Europe. And killing Europe means uh, Europe will be replaced by uh, people who are not as stupid as we are, because by Muslims and Africans who, who, be, who um, don't give up the identity. So it's impossible to create such a world as they want. But the result is the end of Europe, and that's why we have to stop them. The identitarian idea is about Europe becoming European again. It's about us finding, finding again back to our roots. The 20th century, the last century, was the century of ideologies. Many different ideologies tried to transform the world into a better world. And all these ideologies tried to rule the world, to dominate it, communism, liberalism, uh, also some kinds of fascism, tried to, to, re to recreate the world, to make it better. We refuse all of these ideologies. We want to give up all abstract ideas. We believe we shouldn't try to make the world better, we should just uh, find back to our roots, find back to our identities, and not try to make the world better by invading the Muslim people to tell them how to live or 
something like that. So all these attempts to invade other countries, to bring them democracy, to bring them freedom, we refuse that. <clears throat> so. What we want, so we don't focus on everyday things, we focus on Europe. For us, the survival of Europe and our European identity is the only question that matters. What we want to do is to bring Europe back to itself. Today, we Europeans are ignoring our heritage. We are ignoring what our ancestors gave to us. The Europeans today are only interested in the present. They forgot the past and don't care about the future. That's one reason why we are dying. And if Europe has an opportunity to survive, then only when it finds back to its roots and when it finds back its will to survive and to come to, uh, how shall I say, to lead itself into the future. I don't believe that that was really English, but okay. <laughs> we reject any kind of universalism. We don't believe in the one idea that should rule the world. So we, we support pluralism. And the identitarian idea is for Europe only. So when we say we have the identitarian idea, we do not care about the Chinese people. We say, Chinese people, do what you want. If you want to live in a communistic state, or okay, actually it's no communistic state, but if you want to live in a dictatorship, do it. If you don't want it, then rebel. But we don't care about you. So we want to visit your country, but we will not go to China and tell them, oh, the government is terrible, or you have, to, you have to move on. No, we just care about Europe. That's the point. <coughs> but we'll also never accept others telling us what to do. So if Muslim people say, live, uh, we want sh Sharia law in Europe, then we'll say, <laughs> so, to respect other civilizations, and other cultures, and other identities does not mean to give up our own identity. And to respect their own identity and to fight for it does not mean to hate other identities. We just say, we in Europe want to go our way. It's that what we call ethno pluralism. You know that phrase from uh, Le Noir. We are identitarians except that there are many different civilizations in our world, and that none of them should dominate the other. We believe that the many different nations, tribes, religions, and civilizations are the real wealth of our planet and our world. That's why we also refuse unlimited globalization. We don't want all cities to become equal. I'm from Vienna, actually from Austria, my mom live in Germany. And when I visit London, I want to see something different. I don't want to see the same globalist cities with the same shops, the same people, and I want to see some, something different. So this attempt to make all cities equal, is, I want to see something local, I want to see something else. Because globalized, globalized cities are half in Germany. No water left, it's not <laughs> That's why I refuse unlimited globalization why we support strong borders to save local identities. But that alone will not be enough to save our continent. To make it clear, we identitarians always think about Europe. That means, uh, I'm German and Austrian, so I love my country, I love my nation, but we always see the whole. We see Europe as one thing, we believe we have the same problems, and we believe that we have to solve these problems together. That's why we identitarians use in every country the same signs, the same, uh, no, not sign, the same symbol, uh, the lambda. Uh, maybe you've seen it, that yeah. Greek uh, letter the Sparta used 2,000 years ago. We uh, use it because we love Sparta. Who does not? <laughs> so we are not, to make it clear, we are not for the European Union. We are for United Europe, but not for this Europe. So we want to stay together. But when we say we want to save local identities, we also want to save the British identity, the German identity, the French identity. Uh, so we don't want one organization and one. Uh, we don't want the European Union tell us, uh, telling us how to live. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> we come crystal. It's our battle call. Many, many political groups that are modern that. Um, try to don't discuss about the past. Also become very, let's say they, you don't really know what they want. In one point, we are definitely unclear. We fight for the reconquest of Europe. That means Europe is the continent of the Europeans and the Europeans only, of no one else.
those cities who are already under control of non-Europeans must become European again. We won't give away any city, village, field, or river. Europe is our heritage, and without it, we could never be who we are. But we are no fanatics or racists, to make it clear. We want to live peacefully together with our neighbors. We accept their religion and respect their culture. We see the Africans and Muslims as our partners. But there will only be peace between them and us when we Europeans stop our invasions and leave Africa and the Muslim world. Leave Afghanistan, leave Iraq, we are not Iraq anymore. <laughs> and then on the other hand, the Africans and Muslims leave Europe forever. Yeah. There can't be peace when millions of them live in our cities. So it can't, it's impossible. It's just a reality. We say it open and clear. Let's talk now a little bit about the book I wrote. Um, this book was quite a surprise. Um, it is now published in German, of course and English, and many, many, many people from different countries ask me if they are allowed to translate it for free. Um, of course, they just do if you want to do it. So we are, might publish a French, an Italian, and a Greek edition very soon, and if all of the translators will finish the job, then we will publish it in something like 12 languages, which is really a surprise. Because actually, I never planned to write a book. Uh, when you ever look at it, if you, when you ever open it, you will find a foreword from Philippe Baudon, um, a, very, a very important French Italian, a great guy, you should invite him one day, it's really <laughs> impressive. And then you will find a text which explains something, who we are, what you want. You know that whenever you look at the web, uh, website of a political organization, of a political organization, you find a who we are text, so who we are, what you want. And actually, I never planned to write anything else than such a who we are text. That's the beginning of my book. And then people liked it and asked me what more, what more, what more. I said, okay. I wrote and wrote. And one day, Arctos asked me for the book rights. I said, yes. And yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking to you. So that this book was really a surprise. And yes, I wouldn't have accepted it. I expected that. So much to that. That's another point which is very important for us identitarians. Choose your weapons is a slogan I use. Our movement rely on our actions on the street. Relax. Sorry, my is really terrible, but I try my best. Our movement relies on our actions on the street. If we are not on the streets, we don't exist. As Philip Adorn, so if we meet in some halls and talk and talk and talk, we do not exist. If we uh, meet on Facebook and write with each other, we do not exist. You exist when you are on the street and when people can see you. Philip Adorn, the French unfaring guy about which I spoke, said in one speech, the streets are our headquarters. So, actions on streets are the most important thing. But the slogan I use quite often is, choose your weapons. That means, whenever I find some guy and I talk to him, and he tells me, yes, your movement is wonderful, your idea is wonderful, but I can't support it because whatever. There are thousands of reasons, thousands of reasons. I would say anyone can support us because anyone has a talent. Anyone can do something. I wrote a book, I hold speeches. That's what I focus at the moment. I try to spread the identitarian idea in Europe, especially in those countries where it uh, doesn't exist at the moment. In my one guy just wrote songs and sings them. Uh, some people make web websites, whatever, uh, to make money. But everyone has a talent and everyone can do something. So if one tells me he can't do something, I know he don't want to do something. Because if you really want, you will always find a way. So that's very important. Choose your reps. Use your talents. We don't say an identitarian, identitarian has to do this. No, be creative. Do whatever you like to do. Uh, what you good can, you will, yes. Do uh, where you are good. I should read more and speak less free. <laughs> okay, we have actually nearly reached the end of my short speech. I hope you got an impression about the identitarian idea. You will then uh, be able to ask many questions. And what the identitarians are fighting for? To make that clear, the identitarians are the future of Europe. And if Europe has a future, then we are it. We need something new. We can't save this continent without ideas. We need new ideas. And we are a new idea. We are that new idea. 
if Europe survives, if Europe has a future, then it, uh, Europe's future will be identitarian. Europe is dying, but we will at least try to save it. Our societies have catch the disease, but we are the cure. Hmm. Our people are blind, but we will open the eyes. Europe has lost its identity, but we will bring it back. Europe is on a way to become a part of Arabia, but we will make Europe European again. And we will do that by stop talking and start acting. Thank you for listening. Uh, Helena, first of all, thank you and congratulations on an excellent speech. Yeah, yeah. When you speak of Europe, does that include the Russian Federation? Vice Russland, Ukraine, and Russland? We have good relationships with the Eastern Europe and with the Eastern Europeans. Uh, it does not include Siberia. No. It includes the Russians, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Next question. Uh, yes, gentlemen, white shirt. Um, yes. When you speak of European identity, yes. do you think of that identity primarily in terms of race and culture, or do you think of that identity at least partly in terms of religion? I ask the question because at some points in your speech you refer to Africans and Muslims as though Muslims were necessarily non-Europeans, whereas of course a European can be any sort of religion, and I'm just slightly concerned because there are aspects, as I'm sure you know, there are, there are sections of our movement across Europe that in recent years have allowed themselves to become obsessed by religious questions to the exclusion of broader racial and cultural questions. And to some extent in doing so, in my opinion, to play the game of those very 68ers who you rightly identify as our enemy. Because if, uh, if Islam is the enemy of anyone, Islam properly defined, not particular groups of Muslim immigrants, but Islam generally. Islam, I would have thought, is the enemy of those 68ers. We must not allow ourselves to be diverted into Islam or obsession. A very good question, and you're totally right. If I would say I can not to Islam, I'm still European, of course. So I just say it Muslims because it's an easier word than to say Arabics plus uh, Pakistani and Turks and it's just a word for all of them. And in general, people meet with Muslims, at least in Austria, non-Europeans. And another thing is said, yes, that's another thing. Uh, that's one thing, this kind of solution we have brought, at least uh, we have found, at least in Germany. In Germany, we have a movement that says the Islam is the totally bad because they are not as liberal as we are. Hmm. They, do, they are not, how, how, they still have traditional families. They uh, still have respect, they still have tradition and culture, and that's why they are bad. We don't say that. We say we are stupid, we are weak, because we have no tradition, we have no culture, and we are the <laughs> <laughs> to, bring that, to bring that to an end, that does mean we will not save Europe by hating others because they are not as stupid as we are. We <laughs> <laughs> Following on from that, uh, can you tell me how important is Christianity going to be in revitalizing Europe? I can't answer this question in general, because the identitarians avoid all questions that could uh, lead to inner struggles. It means we have in the identitarian movements in Europe, some very Christian people, some other people who are not Christian, uh, so I can't talk for all identitarians. In general, um, European identity consists of many elements. and. You can, how, how, I should say that. I'm so sorry to interrupt, yeah. would you not say that Christianity has been such a core part of our culture and identity in Europe, it's something that we cannot afford to, to lose? <coughs> it definitely is an element, but others, for, you can't focus on other elements. It's just what's important for Europe. If Europe is for Europe, the Christian Europe can say, great. Uh, others say uh, Europe is for me something else, but at least, it, today is not the question. Today is not the question if Europe will be Christian in the future, or if it will be something else. The question is if Europe will survive or die. And that's what we focus on. So that we don't get in a struggle. So we try to avoid such questions which could us lead on to discussions because we want to stop talking and arguing with each other. We just want to act and do something. So I can't, I can't answer it for my entire Next question, front here. Uh, you mentioned it in your speech that the most important thing um, for European people is the action to act, to do, to do something, um, and to demonstrate on the, on the streets. 
but uh, let's say, what, what will happen if uh, the government says, oh, okay, you've demonstrated a lot, we give you the power, what, what will happen after? Don't you think that uh, it needs a deeper knowledge, understanding for uh, European movements to, to know how to lead uh, a traditional country or, or an empire? We are meta-political movement. That means the six theaters, which at least rule in Germany and France and dominate everything, even if the, most of the people are against them, rule because they control the media, the universities. I know that I study political science. They control mm. the universities. Uh, they control the schools. And we have to ask, maybe you know Gramsci. Gramsci was an Italian communist who wanted to find out in the 20 years why the communist revolution in Europe failed. And he said, you must, before you can make a revolution, you must change the spirit of the people. You must control the universities, the media. You must uh, look that all important people have your, um, have your opinion in, in any way. And we are a metapolitical movement and do exactly that. So what we want to do is to we focus also on universities. We fight for the day when a student comes to the university and he's not traditional left as he was in the 68ers and he is still today. I want to see the day when nearly every student is identitarian because these students will then go into the media, into politics, mm -hmm. and will change something. We do not believe, or not only believe in political parties, which was something you uh, mean. In Eastern Europe, you have a different situation, you know. But for example, in Austria, where I'm originally from, we have in Austria a very, very strong right wing party, the Freedom Party. Since the 98s, this party has between 20 and 30 percent in every election. And nothing has changed. They are strong. They win every election. They win and win and win. They were part of the government. They were the strongest uh, uh, party in the government. Nothing has changed. The media is still left. The universities are still left. <coughs> and the demographic situation is still terrible. We are still dying out. And the mass migration continues. So I don't believe in parties alone. I believe in meta politics. I believe. I will end this very short so you can uh, ask our questions. I believe a party can only say something what the people already think and believe because it needs elections. And you have to change the zeitgeist we see in Germany, uh, the no. spirit of the people first before you can uh, win power of party. We always, we always focused on parties and that was, a, I believe, that was a mistake. So we see ourselves also as a meta-political movement. So we try to be in many social areas. We try to be in universities and uh, to do what the 68ers did in the year 68. No. We just want to copy them, but from the other side. Final question. Um, the, I think one of the biggest problems with Europe is the influence of America and the mercantile influence and the um, corruption that's been brought around by, um, in its own way, not a bad thing, but the, the, the Negro influence into Europe. And, I think, and are you aware of this and do you have a proposal to counter this? Um, when we say we are for European identity, that means we are against mass immigration, but it means also that we want to support uh, to, to defend our European culture against becoming part of America. So that really means that. We are against doing everything. I don't, many people hate the United States. I don't do that. But I want to see Europe as a European con uh, continent and not as vessels. Vessels is today. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, I don't want us to be vessels of the United States. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any kind. So, yeah, yeah. Um, right, I'll just stand by. Um, giving a couple of quotes from this book, which you can write back. Well, you just always say it every time. Um, <laughs> stop trying to sell us, this is to the 68ers, stop, stop trying to sell us the line that we are evil racists just because your multiracial utopia disgusts us. <laughs> Another one I like it. We don't want a multicultural society where our own culture is left to burn in a melting pot. Mm. Wise words, <laughs> wise words. Now we're enmeshed, enmeshed in a Marxist liberal web. The Arabs, very traditional people, have a saying, to destroy the web, destroy the spider. <laughs> now the Marxists and the liberals say that we whites are timid, lazy, weak and asleep. Well, perhaps our people are asleep. Perhaps they do need some spirits. So let's wake our race up and show our enemies that we are anything but timid, lazy and weak. Let's wake our race up Let's destroy the web and destroy the spider. And thank you for Marcus for helping us do that. Thank you.